Welcome to Derek Does. Today, we're gonna do these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk today about the US military's M65 field jacket. I'm wearing mine personally. I have one, uh, it's my son's. And then this one I just actually picked up cause it was a really good deal. Uh, and we're gonna talk about each of the different styles, I guess, of, as you can tell, they're very similar, but um, they're a little different too. Uh, and you'll see the, I'll show you kind of the differences to look for that will help date the year of your M60, M65 field jacket and what to look for as you're out in the out and about and you find one. So first I thought I'd tell you about the M65 field jacket. Uh, if you're not familiar with field jackets in the US military uh, that people have been wearing for quite a while, uh, I'm sure you've seen them. Uh, particularly the M65 probably gets the most play uh, or the most notable play. Uh, as you've seen them in um, a Taxi Driver, Rambo, um, then you, they're just everywhere. Uh, and th they're a prominent jacket. And as the name implies, it was made in 19, or was released in 1965 for uh, US to wear. The first one that I'm aware of is the M41. Uh, and that was a uh, different type of jacket, but it's still a field jacket uh, for World War II. And then that got improved to a jacket that looks very similar. Because uh, the M41 was more of a jacket jacket. Uh, and, and the M65's uh, more of a coat because they go down as opposed to like at your waist. Uh, and then there was the M43, which replaced the M41. The M43 was green. All of drab. It only came in one color, as far as I'm aware of. The M41 was came in a greenish, like, and then also kind of in a khaki. And the Navy also had one. They didn't call it the M41, but it looked exactly like it. Um, but they had their own, and then the Army had theirs. Uh, but the M43 came out, uh, and it was all of drab, and it was used throughout the continuation of World War II. Uh, and then they came out with the M50. Uh, but that only lasted a year. And then there was the M51, and that lasted all the way up until the M65. Uh, the uh, M43 was a buttoned jacket. Uh, the M50, I think, was a button too. And then the M51 was the first one with a zipper, I believe. I personally had an M43 that they had put a zipper on it uh, that was a wartime done, or maybe it was like post-war. Uh, so it's kind of really unusual, also a really unusual size of a 44 long. Uh, now the thing to think about when you're buying a jacket, particularly like the older ones like that, don't really buy your size you normally buy because they were made to be put over your, you'd have a uniform on and you'd have probably a, a coat or a jacket and then you put your M43 on or your M50, your M51. M65s are kind of the way, same way, they're oversized. Uh, and these naturally came with, and the other ones did too, a liner, uh, which actually is pretty popular now. I've seen people just actually wearing the liners, the M65 liners, uh, but it was just a, a quilted uh, uh, material that goes underneath it to kind of give you a layer, basically. Usually most people don't use those layers. They just wear the jacket by themselves. And if you want, you can put a sweater on, something like that's fine. Uh, so I'm going to show you the difference now between the jackets. I have three uh, that I'll show you and they, each one will show kind of a different uh, version of the jacket. Uh, the current one that I have uh, is a 1969 version. And I'll show you details of what to look for uh, and the differences of that sort of thing. So let's go into that. So this is my jacket. I've had it for a while. Uh, this is a 1969 M65 field jacket. Things to look for that they come, all M65s, they have a zipper that runs around the complete hood. And inside that uh, zipper is, oh sorry, that uh, runs around the collar is a hood. Uh, and it's just a real thin cotton hood. It really doesn't give you that much. And if it gets wet, it will get soaked. These jackets are not waterproof. Um, so you can wear them out in the rain for a little bit but what's gonna happen is they will get soaked. So uh, unless you spray it with something, they're not gonna be waterproof. Uh, every M65 field jacket uh, has a, a zipper. Now this one, 
uh, as you can tell, is an all aluminum zipper. All aluminum zippers were the first generation, I guess you would call it, as uh, M65. Uh, and then, uh, then in about 71, they went with a brass zipper. And then somewhere along the line, I don't know when, they went with a plastic zipper. And I'll show you each of those. So you, uh, you all have these on them. Uh, this actually has Velcro, and this is common even in 65s. Uh, Velcro had come out, so it's like a little throat latch you can go around there to keep warm. So you, uh, it has pretty much everything you need. It has snaps, so you have a zipper, but then you also have a wind flap uh, that you can snap down to keep things out. The buttons on the inside here, you can see that, that is for that liner I was talking about. It would just button in there to give you the liner then it slides in and that's the only thing that holds it are those buttons uh, you do have uh, a, a waist drawstring that you can pull in and as you can see the snaps on these are still scovel uh, which are really nice uh, as a vintage the zipper itself i don't know if this one's actually marked I don't see a marker on that. Um, I'm not sure actually who makes this zipper on this early one. But um, I'll show you. The back is just a plain back. You can see the drawstring there. Sometimes you would find these and people would write something on the back of it. I know the Navy has a similar one and a lot of times all their different units in the Navy usually on on the boats and that sort of thing, we'll write down what they are so you can kind of figure out what things are. Um, it's got snap pockets in the front. It's got two of those. Um, and then it also has snap pockets here in the, the bottom, but mostly people kind of shove them in there just so it's a hand warmer. Even though it doesn't come with hand warmers, that's your hand warmer, really. The nice thing is too, the sleeves have basically this piece that uh, it's velcroed on but comes out and it comes out to like that much and it kind of protects the uh, the top of your hand uh, so if you were like just out holding your rifle or that sort of thing it would keep kind of the weather off of it a little bit if it's raining again these are not waterproof they never were they're not Gore-Tex or anything like that the modern stuff is but uh, these aren't so let's take a look at the uh, label uh, so this is a medium regular uh, and it gives you the chest size, although it says up to 41 inches and I'm more like a 43, 44, and this fits me fine. This is kind of like your base and then you go up. So it does with the hood. Uh, and as you can see, the date, if you ever want to date your military items, uh, when you go to the DSA, it'll have a 100. Then you see that 69-C, that 69 is the year. So you can always tell the year, and then this is from the Apparel Corporation of America made this particular one. And then uh, down here, there's also uh, coat, the actual uh, label for the actual jacket. Uh, as a field, Coat Man's M65. So that is my personal one, and I love it. Uh, I love the way it looks, it fits great, it's comfortable, it doesn't get in the way. It's just a great all-around jacket. If you're going to have one military jacket, get an M65. You're going to love it. Uh, it's just going to work in any situation uh, and any, anything you're going to wear with it. It's really a great jacket. Let's look at the next one now. So this one is my son's jacket. Uh, this is also an M65. And you can kind of tell this one has been washed maybe or just worn a little bit more. Uh, the nice thing about these jackets is they, they fade to a really nice patina that just gives, it just looks better and better with every time you wear it. Uh, but his, as you can tell, has, you can see the difference, a brass zipper. You know, that's a Scavel, triple marked, I assume. Yeah, triple marked. Uh, still has a pull tab on it. I don't think mine has a pull tab anymore. Uh, but you can see it's the same. Everything's the same. It's got the buttons on the inside for your uh, liner. It's got the drawstring, uh, but it has a brass zipper. Uh, and of course, those buttons are brass too, and mine are also. And these are... Uh, 
I don't know that one. Uh, R A U F Company Apparel are the uh, snaps for this one. So it all same thing. It's got the two front snaps. It's got the two bottom pockets. It has that uh, little uh, piece that comes out to protect your hand if you want to. Uh, it's got the zippered. Uh, as you can see, even the zippered isn't aluminum. It's a uh, brass uh, for your collar. And this one, and we'll take a look. All right, so if we take a look at this label, as you can see, it's been washed because it's actually faded and come off a little bit more. Uh, this one's a medium short. Uh, and you can see this chest is still the same, even though, because they're both mediums. One's medium regular and one's medium. Uh, and if you go to Code Men's Weather, you can see this is, this is an actual early, early Alpha Industries, and they still make these jackets today. This one's an original when they actually made military jackets, and today they kind of just make, I won't say reproductions, but they're, I don't even know if they make them for the military anymore, but they make the same jacket. So they've been making jackets for a long, long time. And here, if we go to the uh, DSA 100, you see a Dash 71. So this jacket is from 71. So both those jackets are what you would consider a Vietnam era jacket. Um, which, uh, let's see if this one has its M60. Yeah, this one also still has its... See, it's a little different though. It doesn't say M65. It just says Coat Cold Weather Man's Field. But this is an M65 field jacket. Moving And now moving on to the next one. This is the Woodland Camouflage version. Uh, in the 80s, uh, when I was kind of getting into all this stuff, uh, these jackets came in all different colors. You could get them in Woodland Camo. You could get them in Olive Drab. They came in black. They came in uh, kind of like a dark gray. They came in... Um, whether because of that, maybe a tan one. Uh, they came in all different colors. Basically, this jacket became the jacket, uh, and everyone had it. Uh, this is the same same setup. You've got the zippered hood, but if you notice now, it's gone to a, a YYK, and it's a plastic zipper, and the main zipper itself also is a plastic YYK. Still has the brass. Uh, snaps and that's the same uh that's the same snap that was on that 71 and it still has the same buttons olive drab on the inside but woodland camo on the outside and i think today they i don't know if they still make the m65 it'd be crazy if they did but uh it would probably come in that digital camo and desert storm camo and all the different camos of of everything uh, same as you can see it's exactly the same jacket uh, but it's in woodland camo now let's take a look at its tag now its tag is actually the more modern tag and you can see this is a small long uh, coat and they just call it a camouflage pattern even though it's woodland camouflage but you can see here on the DSA uh, 100 it's from 86 so this jacket is from 1986 and it's missing they don't put that tag down there anymore they just put a bigger longer tag up here so that's kind of a quick overview of at least three different styles of M65 because I know they, they're, they're different generations and we saw like three just in this. Uh, there might have been more maybe in the 90s they came up with something else and in the 80s it was a little different than even what I showed you. Uh, but at least gives you an idea what to look for uh, if you're looking for an M65. Obviously, at least for me, if I was buying one, I would want a Vietnam era one, which would be from 65 to 72. That would be what I'd want just because it's the jacket of that time. Uh, just like if I was getting an M43, I'd want to make sure I got one that was made before 1945, because uh, otherwise then it's a post-war. Uh, but if you're going to get an M51 during the Korean War, you'd probably want that one. Uh, so you kind of want the jacket for the area, unless you're buying a reproduction. I know these jackets are uh, reproduced uh, with a lot of companies uh, that make them. And if you wanted a brand new one, you might as well just go that route unless you want to get uh, like a modern one 
um, you could go that route too. But if you wanted it with the aluminum, if, you, if the only way to get it is the reproduction, then that's what you'll have to do. Uh, so I thought you might enjoy that. Um, so obviously if you're gonna get one, price-wise, um, anywhere from 10 bucks if you're lucky, uh, probably up to 200 uh, if you're unlucky. <laughs> uh, but generally you could probably find one for in that 50, 50 to 75 range if, you're, if, if you really shop around. Um, the trouble though is finding one for your size too because they came in uh, small, medium, and large, and then extra large. And then there was short, regular, and long in each of those. So this is gonna make a huge difference, but if you have longer arms, don't get one that's short because you're gonna notice it in the arms. And if you're a short guy with shorter arms, you probably don't wanna go with long. But anyway, that's uh, what I had on the M65. I thought you might enjoy that. Uh, if you like this sort of content, I'm always gonna be bringing out some vintage stuff and hopefully uh, giving you a little bit of information that I have. Obviously, I don't know everything. Maybe you know more. Uh, feel free to put it in the comments. I'm sure there's guys that are like experts on this stuff. I'm not, I'm just kind of a novice, uh, but I've been dealing with it a little bit, so I know just enough to get in trouble. Uh, but uh, if you like it, subscribe. I appreciate that. Um, like, comment, all that stuff. Uh, uh, it should be great. And I'm going to see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.